Hello everyone and welcome back to Pixel Mentor. Recently I released a library of free model uh, that I created to give um, artists the chance to work with the high detail model uh, for their lighting purpose, effects, whatever they want to do, texturing, whatever it is. Um, and many of you that ask me like how I did it like this library so quickly and the today's tutorial is just to explain how I did this kind of stuff. First of all, you need to choose the kind of model you want to work with. I'm starting with high resolution like 3D scan coming from this website. Um, so I download my scan, usually it's an STL or an OBJ file. And then you can simply import your file inside Maya and do the rest. Once I'm in Maya, I can simply take my asset and scale it and reproportion it to the real life size. That's all I always do. If you try to import an STL file and it doesn't work, is that because your STL plugin is not enabled? So you can just simply go to Plugin Manager, look for STL, and you're gonna enable the STL translator. And this way, you can import any stereolithography file that is the STL extension. Topology is very important uh, when it comes to production-ready asset because you cannot work with something like that. It's too dense, too heavy. Um, there's no UVs. Um, there's gonna be problem probably doing like any kind of effects or if you want to do any texturing so it's always good to have like um, a good topology on your asset to work with but sometimes it can be very tedious and long to do retopology by hand so in some cases like in this one where we don't need to have like any specific deformation of the assets we can use some auto retopo tools there are like many out there even included inside Maya but the one that I found that is performing the best in my opinion is the one still inside ZBrush that is the Ziri Mesher the easiest way to import a mesh from and to ZBrush is using the GoZip plugin that is included inside ZBrush, and it's this one. I can simply select my asset, send it to, with a GoZip button, and everything is done. Once I'm here, what I can do is like just go simply to the geometry option and go inside Ziri Mesh and Ziri Mesh. And bear in mind that sometimes, since this asset comes from scan data and stuff like that, there can be some issue in the geometry. So you can always try right away to do this kind of operation without fixing anything or without even looking for fixing anything. But what I suggested to you at least is do like a mesh integrity test and check for the mesh and it says it's fine. I know by experience that this asset will fail if I try to zero mesh, no matter how. So what you can always do if this happens inside the mod modified topology option, you can always go and weld the points and they're gonna take a bit and gonna weld the points and you're gonna close the holes in case there are holes. And then you can repeat the operation of like, check the mesh integrity. And if it's gonna find any problem with this case, you can fix the mesh. These already can fix 90% of the time the issue that you can have like in an asset like that. And then you can go and do your retopology. So what I usually do, I duplicate my asset just to keep like, everything clean and be sure that I'm not doing like um, modification on the original model. So I do like, I can call it like this one, zero mesh. And I can perform my, um, again, zero mesh operation. So I can go there again inside zero mesh. And usually I use like a 10K as a standard. This number is mean like in um, thousands. So it's 10,000 polygons. And then you can do zero mesh. After a couple of seconds, usually it's like 20, 30 seconds, something like that, depends on the, how complex is the mesh and how powerful is your machine. ZBrush will give you back like a, a nice topology. As you can see, the result is pretty good. You can activate your wireframe to see how the geometry is done. And then you can see the result is pretty good. So it's like we went from uh, over 2 million polygons to just like a little bit under 30K. So I think it's very, very good result. So. If you want, you can proceed with doing like your manual UVs here inside uh, Maya. You can use the UV master inside ZBrush to do automatic UVs or semi-automatic UVs inside ZBrush. Or you can use also another feature that is the auto unwrap available in Substance Painter that it's the one that I will show you right away. So I can simply select my um, geometry, in this case, put zero measure, OBJ, leave the resolution as a 4K, it's fine. Um, they use the UV tile settings for UDIMS and then UV tile workflow and enable the auto unwrap um, features if you want to do the UVs inside 
uh, Substance Painter. So you press OK, you're going to import the file and I'm going to create the UVs for you. So it's not going to take longer than a couple of seconds to be honest. Once it's done, you're going to have your asset. And as you can see, if you go inside your 2D entry view, you're going to see that it did like uh, a decent job with the UVs. So next step will be to take my assets, bake the uh, texture from the high resolution mesh. So I can load inside here my high resolution mesh. I will choose to bake the maximum resolution possible for the texture. I will do it like a mesh texture that I will do. And I will bake only the one that I need. So in my case, the normal and the ambient occlusion, if you want to bake also the ambient occlusion. Majority of the time, you don't need to touch any of these parameters, just simply bake the textures, and you're gonna see how it will transfer the high resolution details on a low resolution mesh in a matter of seconds. So, when the process is finished, you can simply go back to your Substance Painter and you can see how all the high resolution details has been baked on top of the low resolution mesh. So, we still have two steps to do export these mesh now because we did the UVs here so we need to export the mesh and we're going to export the textures what texture we need to export it's looking at the template is the mesh maps that we need to export from our scene so we take these settings we export our textures we export in the folder that we want and we're going to have our normal maps and occlusion maps 8k baked out of this way so once I'm back in Maya I will import the file from that I exported from Substance Painter uh, this low poly mesh with the UVs done and I will assign like a simple material like um, standard shader uh, Arnold standard shader whatever render engine you use I plug my normal map from Substance Painter inside an AI normal map of Arnold and I plug it inside the normal of the shader and that's simply it so this is going to be your result as you can see poly count is fairly different this is over 2 millions, this is a little bit less than 30k. So it's almost one tenth of the number of polygons that are like used. And this one, as you can see, the details are fairly identical. Uh, and this can be used like in many, many different cases, like, as I said, effects, um, texturing, look depth, lighting tests, whatever you want to do and it's give you the chance to experiment a lot of things without necessarily needed to do like proper modeling or proper retopo if you don't want to if you're too lazy or whatever it is so i hope this was useful and i'll see you next time happy pixel